right here, we have a Georgia Addiction Center company that was ordered to pay $122 million to settle dozens of whistleblower lawsuits. Walk us through this one. We have a lot of good details, uh, particularly from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I've got some context that I'll add here, but this is another False Claims Act lawsuit. Uh, as we've said before, one of the few ways that uh, states, uh, federal governments, and even individuals are able, able to recruit, recoup some kind of money in the form of damages or uh, force these kinds of settlements uh, they don't admit wrongdoing now. You not, uh, we're talking about uh, universal health services and uh, uh, a, a subsidiary of UHS in Delaware, as well as Turning Point Care Center, which is a, US, a UHS facility located in Moultrie, Georgia. But they've all agreed to pay $122 million for billing for medically unnecessary inpatient behavioral health services failing to provide adequate and appropriate services and paying illegal inducements to federal health care beneficiaries. That's according to the Department of Justice. So we're talking about Medicare, Medicaid fraud, essentially. And, um, you know, that's a that's a crime that has uh, bipartisan support for going after uh, because uh, nobody likes anyone to be receiving entitlements that they shouldn't be receiving. And uh, overbilling is something that you can usually get the government to be on board with clamping down on. Uh, so it describes the civil settlement. Again, they admit no wrongdoing, but it mentions that uh, 36 whistleblowers filed um, 19 False Claims Act lawsuits, and they're going to split $15.9 million from the government's share of the settlement. And at least 10 of the whistleblowers originally filed a suit in Georgia. And there are still some suits that remain sealed, so we may not actually know the details of those. Some of the claims, uh, just so you can get a specific idea of what we're talking about here, uh, there's one facility that was apparently uh, pressuring staff to conduct diagnostic psych psychiatric assessments in 30 minutes, uh, while uh, Anchor, uh, Anchor is uh, the company or the facility, was billing the federal government for one to two hours. They allege that these abbreviated and quick diagnoses allowed for UHS and Anchor to routinely admit patients based on a financial objective to make money by getting Medicare and Medicaid patients in a hospital bed at Anchor, despite the fact they allege that most of the patients did not experience psychosis or were not mentally ill at admission. So fabricating that they are mentally ill so that they could use the system to overbill Medicaid and, Medi and, and Medicare. Uh, and then the Atlanta Journal Constitution provides some very good context for what the history is of some of these lawsuits. So I don't generally like to just sit here and read entire news articles for you, but I'm going to read a large section from this because it has some good context for those of you who are interested in these kinds of False Claims Act lawsuits. And, and, and the whistleblowing that is involved. Uh, well, first off, AJC has a pretty good summary here that substance abuse treatment has become a wellspring of questionable practices, particularly during the opioid epidemic as insurance companies and Medicare and Medicaid have covered addiction treatment and businesses have opened to take advantage of the possibilities. So there's a highlighting the profit motive here. And they go on to mention several Medicare fraud cases involving Georgia health care payers recently resolved back in June. Piedmont Healthcare agreed to pay $3 million to a whistleblower lawsuit, a system overbilled Medicare and Medicaid cardiac care, and illegally paid kickbacks to doctors who referred heart patients to the hospitals. Um, there's a center at Augusta that agreed to a $2.6 million settlement for prosecutors for similar allegations. And then in March, uh, executives over at STG Healthcare, which is a hospice, agreed to pay $1.7 million after they were accused of submitting false claims. Again, similar allegations, all related to hospice care. And uh, in, in all of these cases, none of them admitted wrongdoing. And then the most prominent case, what they call the largest settlement in Georgia for any false claims act, uh, allegations was in 2016 when Tenet Healthcare Corporation and two of their Atlanta subsidiaries agreed to pay more than 513 million to resolve claims 
involving kickbacks for patient referrals. Now, we talk about how those settlements are peanuts. Uh, I have down here that Tenet Healthcare um, around that time was making somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 15 and a half billion dollars. Uh, so that's, I don't, know, I don't think that makes it to even 5% of what they had in profits. Um, and then for Piedmont, another example, Piedmont is uh, making about a hundred, has about $123 million in revenue in a year. And they had $738 million in assets in 2018. And they're like the largest healthcare provider in Georgia generating billions of dollars in revenue for uh, the state, but uh, all they're expected to pay out is very small by comparison.